everybody to the Hearthstone Pro-Am tournament uh, brought to you by NVIDIA. We're going to go into our last match of the day for today. It's Life Coach versus Faramir. I actually realized it probably should readjust the lighting because before it looked okay, but now it's like uh, it looks a little bit weird as if I'm in a Photoshop green screen. So I'm going to fix that real quick. Then why don't you talk about our last match? Well, the last match was Colento versus Gara. Uh, that was an amazing match. Um, Colento of Cloud9, Temple Storm Gara. But right now we're going to uh, see Life Coach versus Faramir. Life Coach from Team uh, Team Nihilum or Nihilum. And Faramir, uh, Faramir actually got a team as well, right? Like, do you remember which team Faramir is on? Yeah, he's on Trig Esports. All right. Um, okay, no comment. But um, no comment. it's not the established, well-known uh, monolith known as Cloud9. But uh, Trig Esports is uh, one of the new teams that people have known from across multiple games. And in this scenario, uh, or sorry, in this game, this scene, they picked up Faramir, Powder, and D2. D2? Yeah, D2. The semifinalists from BlizzCon. So we have a lineup here. We have Warrior... Uh, Mage and Paladin, very standard from Life Coach, although he's been bringing Handlock more recently over Warrior, so I'm curious about that. And we also have Mage, Hunter, and Paladin for Farmer. We have the possibility of having Paladin versus Paladin, or even Paladin versus Warrior, and consequently running out of time because not only are those long matchups, but we have Life Coach in the house. <laughs> so life coach is getting faster and faster actually all you then, hiko fanboys get ready because it, it might be good yeah we might, possibly. <laughs> we might run out of time still i'm excited to see paladin i really like the class i played it a lot i post gvg and um i'm happy that players are still playing it farmy was playing paladin a lot and he had a lot of success with the class in december winning uh some tournaments like winning tavern takeover i believe and uh I don't remember which turn, uh, Heroes of the Cards, I think, also. So, uh, great players and a great match here. We'll see who's going to come on top. The players already started, so we can see Farmer starting with the Paladin deck, uh, already having a good opening with Juggler and Master for battle. A life Coach having the Paladin as well, so that's the mirror you wanted, Froden. It is the exact one that I wanted. That's right. Paladin vs. Paladin is so temple-oriented, and Hard to calculate what can actually happen um, if your opponent just gets blown out. Now look at that starting hand for both players. You notice something in common? No, uh, yeah, there is a couple of cards that are similar. It, it's a couple of cards that potentially could lead into blowouts on both sides. Knife jugglers and muster for battle. So life coach just has to hit one, one of these juggles. You think he can do it? Uh, well, I think oh. he can do it. He misses the first one. He right, hits. He got it. Yeah, he got it. Weapon also is so important in this matchup. Like having that weapon, uh, Light Justice, to kill the dudes and, well, kill Knife Jugglers as well, mm -hmm. is it's really doing a lot. But there is a consecration for, for Faramir. Even though he's not afraid of Quartermaster yet, it's only turn three. So on, he, has, he is the one with the coin. Uh, Quartermaster not being able to drop on four. So consecration here, very powerful. Yeah, and the fact that he can use Consecration on one of the Muster for Battles, it's good comfort in his mind. But look at that! Whoa. A second Muster for Battle followed by Quarter Mash on the following turn. That was big, especially because one of the Muster was used. Oh, look at this. Ah. Tempting. It is tempting. tempting, but, you know, that is your second Consecration. You have to calculate, like, what's the chance that there is a Quartermaster? And if Quartermaster is being dropped, what will happen with the board? So if you go with your own Master for Battle here, which I'm not sure you really want to, because you do have that juggler. Oh, man, Farmer takes the risk. He'll be so disappointed here. I mean, it's very unlikely to have it. So the fact that he gets the Quartermaster... It's just difficult because now there's so much pressure, and like we said, it's snowballing out of control. And you know, I, we joked in the past about how Paladin vs. Paladin might have been really slow, but in general, it's sped up so much because of these type of cards where <clears throat> now he needs like a quality to deal with it pretty easily. But whoa, 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 whoa. Local One second show. here. 
We have a lore walker show in the house, which gives muster for battle right back over to life coach. <laughs> there is one more sleeper card that's really important in this matchup, and the card is Harrison Jones. It can deal with the weapon, oh, right. it can draw some cards. Harrison Jones is always so amusing on a three we uh, three charge weapon. Although he technically doesn't need to put that down, he can just try to control the board with really sticky minions, the shield and mini bot, the uh, the pilot shredder. Those cards are really high impact as well. And I really like I like building that up over Harrison. The the priority will be that you don't want Harrison to get smacked by a true silver champion and then demand control of the board. Instead, you should go the opposite direction, where um, you you should try to use Harrison to take out the true silver champion and then leave your opponent in a really awkward spot. Oh yeah, certainly. And uh, we can see what you already mentioned that this is a tempo game, and Life Coach took that tempo away. He is the one maintaining it and just developing the board further with minions, uh, dealing with the poss possible threats, putting him in a very good position here. Consecration being very strong, but then giving Life Coach a consecration as well. The Lord Walker show is. Not doing good oh, farm here. Lure Walker troll. Oh my god! Shield the mini bot! <laughs> farm here just smiling and conceding here, like, oh man. That's funny, diplomatic. Dude. <laughs> I, I don't want to say the lore, the the pilot shredders made the difference. Um, they did have an influence for sure, but the big difference maker had to be that early start and the fact that Life Coach put his knife juggler first. I don't think Farmir made mistakes. Per se, it's just that the draws were very, very powerful in Life Coach's end. All he had to do was hit with one juggle, and then from that point on, the tempo was completely in his favor. He had a reasonable curve. Uh, he had that quartermaster right on time, and for Farmer to make that call that he had to double consecrate, it's like that's like a really difficult read that you have to make onto your opponent, and almost like the incorrect play most of the time. You have to like play the less percentage chance. And uh, you might end up getting punished for it anyways, right? So, oh yeah. Also, also the like, consecrate second one, uh, second consecration is so important as matchup because at some point, like turn eight, you do want to use it, uh, maybe with equality. But you need some tools to control the board. If you use second consecration, you give a clear sign to your opponent that hey, you can now play whatever you want. I can't clear it. Yeah. All right. So now we have the uh, warrior and mage. Remaining for Life Coach. We know that Life Coach loves that Mech Mage. And I I want to say it's just regular Control Warrior. I don't know if there's anything special about it. Some people have been rotating Gore Howl back in, um, playing Baron Geddon, and even you know messing around with Unstable Ghoul a little bit. Some people have been trying to really figure out Grim Patron Warrior. And... There is a couple of differences. <laughs> There's a, there's a few differences here and there, but uh, in the meantime, Faramir runs. Uh, I feel like he runs a pretty straightforward lineup. The ma the mage might be the big X factor here, but we've seen what kind of paladin he runs, and we know Faramir is a big paladin fan in general. I think that actually the win uh, that Life Coach got with Paladin is important because uh, Paladin might have um, trouble with uh, with Hunter, and then Mage is more or less. Like with this aggressive build from Life Coach without an anti kill bots, uh, Mage will be favored as well. So Paladin was potentially the downfall. But now having secured that win, he is in a good position to take down the series. Mm. Well, I think we're about to go into game number two. Yes, we are. Oh, I see an Arcanite Reaper. That's already a different card. In fact, it's the Mech Warrior. I forgot about that. Life Coach really likes Mech Warrior too. Mech Warrior? Can you tell me more about this deck? <clears throat> Well, it's essentially still benefiting off of uh, Mech Warper, except you're just you're using Warrior to do really aggressive burn, and you you leverage just cheap removals like Execute in order to get past. Life Coach played this last week, I believe, and won, and uh, maybe he'll do it again. Except against Paladin, I feel like it'd be a class you struggle with, just because no matter how big your board is, in the end they might have a quality consecration. Although now, now it's different though. Because Paladins have been running one equality as their standard. They they are very start dependent. You know, sometimes well, they don't get the right draws. I'm not sure, man. This this is still such a new deck, it's really difficult to say for exactly. 
Well, we can look at it kind of like Mech Mage and um, looking at Paladin. Paladin is so the resistor for, for Farmir. But Paladin is, again, in general, strong uh, versus Warrior because you are able to um, get the tempo early, get the get those minions, um, and then Warrior just um, eventually runs out of removal cards. But with this, we have to treat it like a Mech Shaman, maybe Mech Mage. Also snowballing. So again, a tempo game, I believe. Temple Mage, I don't know, man. Temple Mage is, I, I, I kind of want to like Temple Mage, but sometimes I just can't bring myself to like it. It's just one of those things where it sometimes has inconsistent draws and you just get punished. By the way, Life Coach putting Fell Reaver in, 8 plus, man. I, I really like Fell Reaver nowadays. Before, it was one of those things where I, I just couldn't figure out what deck it really belonged in, but now, like, mech decks, I really figured out that Fell Reaver just has to hit the face once, and uh, you do crazy stuff. And what, you know what's so funny about Arcanite Reaper? is like, it's it's as if you have Doomhammer with Rockbiter, but you just have it for one time, and that's it. You just yeah. hit the face for 10, and uh, it's a lot of punishing damage, really. So I, I'm, I'm actually digging the, the mech deck. And Screw Clank Junker is going to be really funny too once uh, it punishes Faramir for trying to develop anything on the board. Well, this, this Mech Warrior uh, right now looks really good, especially with Faramir having no hard removal in his hand. He is able to clear that Cog Master, but uh, a Life Coach, if Life Coach just clears those dudes, then uh, Quarter Master is not going to do much. Oh, he's actually. Yeah. Okay, killing one dude makes a lot of sense. I mean, is. It's kind of like he has another piloted Sky Golem in his deck, right? Yeah. The Shredder just is there. It's doing so much damage. The, the six attack minions are the, the ones that creep on you the most. It's like you don't really feel like it's that too different from a five attack minion, but you just realize that it cuts a whole turn off of your health. Uh, in terms of how much damage it can do. And it's absolutely insane the amount of pressure that he can put on here. Now, interestingly enough, there is that big game hunter and that's their Alder Peacekeeper. Both ways you can deal with uh, really big attack minions. So Fell Reaver is not the play here. Not to also, mention that the board's the, not the safe. The Sludge Belcher will be uh, really uh, important for Farmir because normally uh, Life Coach can go uh, for face and try to seal the game with the, with the Arcane Reaper. But then uh, here, well, just I think playing just a couple of mechs will be very valuable for him. The problem, the yeah. Worker. How do you proceed from there? Do you do you trade on the board at all so that way it's a little better, or do you just hit the face and put him at ten health? I would like to make an assumption that there will be no taunts. So playing a mech warper and how's this the warrior mech called? This is mech warrior. Mech warrior, like right. the old game where you used to be. Uh, you don't you remember right? It's basically like video game Gundam Wing. <laughs> yeah. You just get put. In, you just and you do like barrel rolls and stuff. Don't you remember? They tried making a new game like Hawking off of it. Oh, I like it. Arcanite Reaper to the face. Put him at potential lethal. It's will well, get stopped. He has by a lot of pressure there. Though. Yeah. And it's not like um, Paladin is running a lot of taunts. Like you know, it's not a Tyrion turn, and um, there is a chance for a Sludge Belcher. Oh, <laughs> like That's twelve. Funny. Life coach is hoping for anything that had damage, but unfortunately it doesn't. <laughs> Although it, this light well keeps him alive for a little bit. Oh, there's a Ragnaros. Snap! There's Rag in this deck too. Well, there's there are no heals for Faramir, so Ragnaros is potentially lethal in uh, in two turns when uh, Life Coach will be able to play it. For now, he's still like just fighting for board. Like Faramir's board is not that great. Just the two five and one two. Hoping that Fur Reaver will survive. Another sludge about Oh man, support. another sludge. BGH. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it, it's so interesting with Fur Reaver is because before everybody was playing double BGH to counter booms and and big decks, but right now somehow people stop having the, the the answer. Like Farmer here has that BGH, but most of the time, Fur Reaver actually stays on board. Oh, so many weapons actually burn. The Warbot being burned is fine, but then losing the second Arcanine Reaper and Fire War X is definitely painful. 
So what life could try painful, but like until Paladin draw like gets some health gain, like this Ragnaros is gonna be so problematic. Yeah, so Life Core just needs to clear the board and get the best chance of Ragnaros to seal the game next turn. This is really mm -hmm. interesting. Might be Dr. Boom turn. Yeah, but the problem with Dr. Boom... Like, okay, so you know he burned his other Arcanet Reaper and two of his Fiery War Axes. Belcher, yeah. Yeah. So he's this farm is playing pretty safe here. Yeah, you, you you can't account for like anything missing. Like if he has Gore Howl or any other weapon burn, Death Spite. No, Ragnaros, Ragnaros. Twenty percent to win. I mean, anything he hits on the board eliminates a lot of power too. He gets rid of the taunt. And these minions would have to trade in. I have no time. Yeah, also that's uh that's a taunt down. I wonder what uh, what weapons Life Coach is playing in stack. Does he run Gorhal? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, still risky business. All right. Life Coach basically just just plays his hand here from this point on. And imagine Faramir's face if <laughs> one in seven. slash when this Ragnaros hits the face. One in six. One in seven. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, life coach is still not close to dying. How much damage? But um, now I believe Farmer can steal the Ragnaros. That's right. He just has to sequence everything. He just hits the. Oh, here's a problem. Hmm. That Frothing Berserker actually grows a significant amount of health and damage. That's actually good because then he can attack with Sylvanas into it. Oh, that's right. I, I thought he was gonna trade the Sylvanas in uh, to Rag, but in take that. But that's a really good opportunity as well. Yeah, he also maintains the taunt. Mm -hmm. So right now, Faramir has everything he needs. He gets the Ragnaros. That's right. And I don't think there's a way for Life Coach really to bounce back. Those Sludge Belger draws were so big. Getting a brawl. Getting a brawl would be huge. Might be the only out. Also, Farmer started healing suddenly. Uh, well, I guess yeah. The the true silver champion allows him to heal for a little bit. Boom bots. Oh. Boom bots. <laughs> Don't they still really can't do this as long as Farmer plays keep away? Well, if Life Coach top decks Gorhau and Boom bots actually manage to kill the taunt. And maybe deal two damage to face so that Faramir can't heal. I feel like that's almost as likely as um, Doomsayer coming out of the pilot shredder. Can Faramir go for lethal with Ragnaros here? If he attacks uh, Dr. Boom with Shredder. Yeah, he needs to see what he gets from Shredder. That's a blank. Yep, Swamp Ooze doesn't cut it. Boomba. I mean, it's cleaning up a lot of the board. And uh, the fact that he's at 8 health, too, is very secure. And, uh, Faceless Manipulator into Ragnaros and then hit face. Oh, you're right. Faceless Manipulator. We've seen it today. We might see it again. Nah. Oh, come on. What was the card? Just, that wasn't meant to be, man. That was Tinker Town Technician. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's actually getting really dark in my room. I think the the sun needs to open up a little bit. Winter is coming and darkness approaches. That's right. <laughs> All right. So uh, that's going to uh, finish up the, the, the second game here. Uh, the Mech Warrior loses. It has another chance to climb back. Really fun, really fun deck. I'm really glad that Life Coach has been playing it. He's been doing it on stream apparently from time to time, but not too much uh, in the tournament setting outside of this one. I think it makes a lot of sense for a relatively innocuous series like this one uh, at the NVIDIA Hearthstone event. So. Oh man. By the way, Paula didn't 100% win, win rate in this match. Uh, I guess it technically lost to Paladin. 
All right. Technically, you're right. But then Paladin is out. So we won't see Paladin in this match. We're going to see the clunkers from Life Coach and the Warrior, a Mech Warrior, possibly the Mech Mage, and from Faramir. Oh, well, I don't know what to expect, really. No, I think it's Mech Mage. I think it's going to be Mech Mage on both ends. I don't know if that's going to be the next game that we're going to see, but I think Mech Mage is going to be prevalent... Just because it's Life Coach, one of Life Coach's favorite decks. In fact, I feel like a lot of players really enjoy Mech Mage. Just because it's, one, it's very, very effective. And two, there's a lot of cool things with spare parts. And, um, you know, the, the fact that it does so much early on, but still has that late game, like Ansonitis stealth, and you just burn your opponent. Like, that's just really cool to them. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I like the synergies. I myself really like the max. And I think uh, people need to start appreciating the max because we have them now, but in the future expansions, we'll have to transition into dragons, elementals, gnolls. So uh, I think the game is up. We can actually jump in quickly and see what the players picked for the next game. That's a little mechs. Mech Wars. Mechs versus mechs. Antonitis means it's uh, the mech mage for life coach and of course we saw that scientist usually means it's going to be mech mage as well so the thing about mech mage versus mech mage is that against other classes it usually can be like a blowout or just like for for the mech mage or a stomp the other way but in this yeah. mirror i actually really enjoy watching the mirror yeah because there's really... a lot of small nuances that makes it like, where you can hit, take a decision in a line and it ends up, like, really having strong ramifications for the outcome of the game. Oh, yeah, certainly. This is a very difficult matchup. Like, it's move uh, move for move. It's um, really swingy, and m most of the time it ends up whoever plays, the uh, whoever plays the bomb first. Like, because you trade with minions so much, um, then at turn 7, let's say, the board is more or less clear, and somebody plays the bomb like Dr. Boom. That's why people started adding Ragnaros, because it changes the matchup a bit. Uh, you want the Ragnaros in the, in the mirror match. Uh, so yeah, this will be a very diff um, very interesting match to see. Um, sometimes one of the players can snowball and, and really like overpower the other, but most of the time they just trade minions. Something needs tinkering? Yeah, the thing about uh, the mirror entity too is that it's problematic in the sense that you want to develop the the spider tank as the normal drop over the Tinker Town technician, but you also strengthen your opponent's board, and you did have the Goblin Blast Mage, so that's like one of those things where you know life coaches sit back and think about what's going to come out. All right, so um. Well, looking at the hands, like uh, Med Scientist, as you said, is, is really important. Um, both of the players missed the, uh, missed the, the Cog um, Master. And that's one of the cards that can trade with Mech Warper, with the Snow Chugger. It's also important in this match. Getting good Blast Mages. Yeah, now with so much pressure, the double Spire Tank is like so problematic. Oh, man. Well, that blast uh, didn't do much. That helped at least with the um, the trade onto the Neuertron. But oh man, his own blast mage now has so much potential to destroy everything. Getting to hit uh, on that blast mage is important for yeah. for the for the good trader. Two shots on the yeah, two shots onto the Goblin blast mage. Not the the most appealing one. The coolant could be really valuable as well. What pops out of the the two two popping out of the shredder seems to be also valuable because it contests onto the board. Uh, of course, we do see it. Yet. Yeah, I, I think like the game pans out as exactly as we expected. It's a lot of minion trading, and it's not that any of those players um, has a specific advantage on board, but then Faramir is the one ahead a bit, and he has Ooh. the Dr. Boom on turn 7. Yeah, it sprays just a little perfectly there. Other than the mad scientist taking that hit, didn't really necessarily need to do that, but making sure to get the damage onto it was really significant. Now, Life Coach is the one that has the mirror entity. Gonna be yeah. trying to deny his opponent's Dr. Boom turn. 
double cool ones. Well, Faramir might be locked into not playing a minion if he if he doesn't draw into anything small. Like getting a um, Clockwork Gnome and even a Snow Chugger will be very uh, very big next turn. But if he doesn't get a minion, if he gets a Frostbolt, I guess it's fine as well because then he can play Power Shredder, get it copied, uh, and then kill it. But if he doesn't, that's so awkward getting into that Mirror Entity. Mm. Life Coach doesn't want to have the op, uh, the misfortune of layering his secrets directly over each other. Um, the mad scientist will pull another mirror entity, which it can't, because it's already currently up. So, if he plays a scientist, all he does is hope that it doesn't die. Um, and if Faramir knows this, of course, he can make sure it doesn't lay over each other. And that Frostbolt is a really nice draw. Yeah, but then what do you do after that? Like, if you... Play Pilot Shredder, it gets copied. So you might also think about playing Pilot Shredder and killing the Shredder with the Frostbolt. That's a very yeah, tricky fair turn. enough. But then you know that your opponent might have the opportunity to play a second Mirror Entity then. And that's also problematic. Yeah, you basically need to get rid of Mirror Entity so that you play, uh, so that you can play Dr. Boom. So Faramir stalls again and tries to get another small mech. Uh, well, a chance to get a very small mech right now is, is very big for Faramir. Because he got the, a couple of spells, he got that those pilot shredders, he has Dr. Boom. So a chance to get... He even uses party tanks. So, oh, another mirror entity for Faramir this time. Yeah, the mirror entities are really stalling out the matchup right now. He's going to try to whittle down that mad scientist either way. And that's not what Life Coach wanted to see because he wanted to buy time until he can get some big drop. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Draws into Meredith. Wow. What's happening? That's so funny. Like so, basically, this mad scientist, everything worked out okay. I guess. Yeah, this matchup is this game right now is so uh, confusing. Both players are actually in a standstill. Fireball, another card that's not a small minion. Fire, you're still locked with those pilot shredders in his hand. I, I guess the bright side is opponents not stuck on it. Well, Life Coach is definitely happy about it. Seeing, seeing the Shredder, and he knows that his opponent had so much trouble with Mirror Entity, he just replays it and starts going for face here. Maybe even picks up a minion. Oh, oh God, he gets might the Cogmaster. It might be small, but it's uh, it's a good card. Right, and, and it it can activate his opponent's mirror entity as well. So Thirst is out if he needs to play a big minion in the next couple of turns. So this turn for Life Coach, he just pings the one one, um, plays mirror entity, freezes the four free. Is there a need to? All right. Well, Choose to kill it off. And then he can play Cogmaster so it doesn't get the buff from the mech. And then he can kill it off too. And That's then he really can play Mirror Entity. It could have been really nasty if his opponent got a Noyotron, but it's very unlikely. There is an Azur Drake for Faramir, which is good. He will be able to Fireball if he needs to. Yeah, he definitely needs to make sure the board doesn't get out of control. You can even kill the um, Shredder. Look, he's playing around Loro Cho. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Oh, oh, that's great for Faramir. Ancient Watcher is basically nothing. Yeah, it, uh, it's really hard to activate it in this. Oh, this man. Oh, whoa. He's that the first so boom. Big. Freeze the Drake, or do you just kill the Drake? I guess I you can you just save it. it. <laughs> One one blast mage is not doing anything, and you're the one with uh, with boom. Right, and I mean you have Antonius, which is cool, but you don't actually have any spells. This is problematic. Doctor Boom Just... comes down. Yeah, it's Boom Wars. And you're the one with the boom bots now. So this ancient watcher might actually serve as a um, as a shield. A meaningful purpose, yeah. Oh man, the bots. Yeah, the it's coolant can buy you some really valuable time. Oh, nice. 
Dr. Boom is essentially 14 points of damage if he attacks twice. Right, and then you can squeeze in a little bit more with the Blast Mage if you play it. That's huge. And then you that freeze would be Dr. Boom. That would be... I mean, well, that would be enough if you draw a fireball. Oh, a Neutron! Wow! <laughs> what is, that is happening? so this clutch! Game? Yeah, it's actually amazing. How close is this game? The Boombot goes for face. And, you know, the Snow Tracker follow up is going to be really big too to buy some more tempo. And yeah, that puts Far that's put Farmir in a spot where he can lead those opponent too now. That's five, six, thirteen, fourteen. Farmir will miss. I think Farmir will actually miss damage. He needs to top deck something like uh, Blast Mage, Frostbolt, Fireball. Interesting. Uh, Life coach is thinking what to attack because Blast Mage. If you you put Blast Mage on one, then uh, just Hero Power clears it. You lose two damage, but then if you uh, keep Blast Mage as a two health minion, mm. the Farmer will have to trade into it. Yeah, Where but he hasn't. He has a couple of easy ways he'd rather trade. Um, not to mention that he can freeze his opponent's Doctor Boom and go for uh, his opponent's face. This is really tough. Clockwork Gnome is important in the sense that it can get a spare part for Faramir, so he will be able to feed Antonidas. Uh, so this means that right now he doesn't have to rush. He just uh, he can clear the board, um, but then he can't just play Clockwork and, um, and ping it. But with Life Coach not having any cards, he needs a Fireball to deal with this Antonidas right now. That's right, Fireball would be the exact thing that he ordered, and he- or Doomsayer? Doomsayer is the thing. Uh, no, so it's cheap. cheap. That, I think that's possible. it, right? That's this game right here. Just ping off the, uh, the Clockwork Gnome, and go for the Fireball finish. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the thing, like, I can right, farm right. your CS. He's got this. Rusty Horn, and uh, pretty much everything was allowed because the only thing that wouldn't have killed him, right, was Time Rewinder. If he got Time Rewinder, he wouldn't have been able to. You can use like, if Time it was just, oh, Actually, no, no, no. If he, if he had Antonidas only and Time Rewinder, then it would have been a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he has a sheep, so it's fine. He even had get that Clockwork Gnome. Oh, man, That's that right. was an interesting, uh, interesting game. Um... Mech Mage versus Mech Mage, so fun to watch with those mirror entities in the middle. I really enjoy that one. Yeah, it's very back and forth. A lot of small decisions here and there. Uh, making sure you, it's it's kind of like Zoo versus Zoo, but with a lot of smaller nuances that might make the uh, the matchup flip on its head. Spare parts, uh, how you end up choosing the trades and whatnot. So that makes Farmier take a two one edge, and he just has to win with uh, his. Is Hunter deck against Life Coach's Mech Warrior and Mage. So Mech Warrior and Mech Mage, lots of mechs. Uh, Hunter, if that's a Face Hunter, Farmer actually has an advantage. I believe Hunter, Face Hunter, is favored versus Mage uh, because it just um, well, you do need Unleash the Hounds, you do need um, Juggler, but um, you can trade with those uh, minions. I guess a Mech Mage at least. You can basically stop a Mech Mage from snowballing and deny all the Mech. Um, synergies and then just uh one of the spells even though you can play around the mirror entity really well as a face hunter so uh, i think it's favored a versus mech warrior i'm not it should be similar you just kill the mechs uh, but then again it's a warrior so overall warrior will uh, gain life and fight for the board so we'll see like i think warrior should be uh, a bit better than mech mage versus face hunter but we'll definitely see Ah, oh, well, I, I guess so, because you can armor up. So that gives you the slight advantage. Cruel Taskmaster also being pretty clutch. But there is that card in Mage called Bl Goblin Blast Mage, which can turn around the Hunter matchup dramatically. So I wouldn't count Life Coach out just yet, but you're right in the sense that it's tough. 
Hunter with the nuts is very difficult to stop. All right, so the players are ready. We can see our farmer taking the hunter and life coach are choosing to replay his mage. He knows that he needs to win with both decks. So at this point, it doesn't matter which deck he starts with. Very nice start for life coach. Clockwork into Snow Chugger into Tink Master. Another Tink Master. There is a Leper Nymph for, for Farmir. And there is a Juggler. One of the most important cards in the matchup. Getting Unleash the Hounds would be uh, very good for Farmir as well. Mm hmm. Definitely. So the trade into that is to play around Glaive Zuka, which is exactly what's in the hand. Oh, Mad Scientist. Pretty decent draw there. Yeah, something like a Snake Trap can um, give a lot of advantage to Hunter because there are no AoEs uh, for the Mech Mage. Getting those snakes, being able to trade into mechs, uh, maintaining board control, especially if the Juggler is on board. Yeah. Now, now the Tinker Town can get some value, though. Spare parts also might be huge. That plus one health sometimes is really important. And he gets it. The armor plating, like that kind of stuff, like really makes sure, not maybe not necessarily in this scenario, but if you need to keep minions alive to try to race and Hunter's lining up perfectly for two health uh, explosive trap benefits, then you're going to be in an opportunity to race a little bit faster. So I think yeah. those kinds of small details will be the, the ones that ultimately make or break the match for life coach. They do matter. Like, even if you want to trade in the minions, let's say uh, a farm, you would have an animal companion, get the Misha here. Next turn, uh, Life Coach could play Ting Master and uh, just buff the one on board and trade for, uh, almost for free, uh, keeping his Ting Master uh, alive. So, spare parts, they do always matter, especially if you know how to use them. Mm. They're added for Life Coach. Not very useful in this matchup. No. The hero power seems inevitable. I guess a Noyotron could come down. The thing about Noyotron is that it's so effective if it comes down in the mid stages of the game because then Charger's weapons get used up on it. Like Leroy gets stopped by a Noyotron type of thing. Um, of course, we do know that Faramir has the silence on the other end, so he can get past that relatively easily. But still, no Unleash the Hounds. Faramir would love to pick up Unleash the Hounds, which would. Uh, be one of his primary tools of climbing back onto the board here. Oh yeah. Also, um, the fact that Life Coach has a Snow Chugger and is able to lock down the weapon is, is very important. Um, Mad Scientist is not going to die here um, if there is no silence, so no trap for now. Uh, Life Coach just se securing, just racing and securing his board. Right. So Farmir the has farm? the opportunity of accessing five mana though, so that allows him to knife juggler. Owl and then coin an abusive sergeant to trade into whatever uh, he desires. Most likely the Tinker Town, or no, actually, he can keep this now that he doesn't have to because the Snow Chugger is really problematic, like you said. Yeah, but on the, other, on, the, on the other hand, if he gets explosive trap, then he might be able to deal with um, the, the Chugger and the Niotron. Oh, he's just oh, going for face. face. That is you know what? Faramir is saying, you want to race? I can race. I'm the face hunter here. I do have my wolf riders. I have my quick shots. I can race with you. That's not a problem. How are you going uh, to, to deal with my board? And uh, I think it's correct because at some point, Life Coach will have to start trading with the minions. Like right now, he can't really leave this on board and then just close his eyes because he's staring at too much damage. And uh, so Life Coach will be the first to, to, to win and, you know, uh, start, start killing stuff. What do you think about it? Do you think like farm you should try trading and getting value from the from the secrets? I mean, it has potential to backfire because of how much damage exists and the fact that armor plating is really valuable. That eight damage per turn is is pretty insane, considering that almost everything that you have gets pinged off really easily. At a certain point, Farmir might have to just suicide his minion into the uh, into the Tinker Town and make sure to get that trap. But until then, he can just keep going to the face. Haunted Creeper was a, a bad card for Farmir. Um, not really pushing strategy here. Right. 
I guess in the sense that it gives him a guaranteed minion for kill command, but other than that, it doesn't have much practicality. A little un unlucky here for Faramir too that his uh, that his Wolf Rider caught the extra damage. Because uh, now he can just ping it off and kill off two birds with one stone. Well, the thing is, like, he had a, a sequence, or I guess he could play Glaivezuka before playing the Wolf Rider. If he wanted to get the guaranteed plus one on a Med Scientist. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right, Life Coach is one going to be one damage off lethal? Unless. Unless there is a... Unless a direwolf alpha pops out of that thing, or flame tongue totem? I wonder. This might be time to risk for Faramir. Just close your eyes and think, alright, he doesn't have a fireball, he doesn't even have the frostbolt. He doesn't even have plus one attack from those free spare parts he got. That's Yeah, that's a lot of assumptions. Wow. And, and he he's actually correct. doesn't have those cards. He's correct for now. Whoa. I, but you know what? He can still get the Flame Tongue Totem from Pyro the Shredder. What about, uh, what about Dr. Boom? I wonder. Is that too risky? Or... You still see what you got because Bluegill is, is over. Uh, so now you mean Dr. Boom just on this Boom board. Box. <laughs> they, they have to do 6 damage. I think you just play Anoyotron, you, you can't play Boom here, you need Anoyotron because single Wolf Rider, well you've seen double Wolf Rider, but single Leroy Arcane Golem is going to kill you here. And so you I'm saying you go for Dr. Boom, you let the Explosive Trap go, and you try to do 6 damage to the face, because you're at oh, 5 like, health. Um, it can be still Snake Trap. Oh, <laughs> you're think right, that's... it could be Snake Trap, but you're at 5 health, which is like... That's really nothing to a, to a hunter. I guess a Noyotron could get stopped. Oh, is, is he going for it? Oh, yeah, he's actually good. Yeah, here we go. Wow. Oh, man. And that's Boom, an explosive but... trap. Is it going to be six points of damage? Three? Yes! Oh, he oh gets my it. God, <laughs> God, gosh. Farm, you can't oh, that's sick. Wow. <laughs> That is a tight that series. Oh man, that's so funny. Some of the oh, stuff that we've seen today, man, has been absolutely hilarious and frustrating for one player, but awesome for another. So, such is the life of a Hearthstone player. I just kind of wanted to see what ca what card would farm your draw, but there are so many cards that w that were winning the game. It's crazy. And a uh, life coach showing uh, that he has courage. He knows what's up and he knows how to play Doctor Boom. That's how you win. Well, I mean, you just calculate the odds. The average damage is uh, 2.5 per bot, so you just have to roll a little bit slightly higher than average. And I guess... I, someone knows the exact percentages, but it has to be like like 40%, right? Like that that he wins. It's, it's definitely not unreasonable. It goes slower with, uh, with the second boom bot. So right, right. it might be even less. But then, uh, I think like getting an assumption that there will be an explosive trap was correct because Faramir was so aggressive from the beginning. Everything went to face, like he didn't trade at all. So making an assumption there is no snake trap. Like even with the um, knife juggler, the, the turn when there was knife juggler on board and Faramir refused to trade mad scientist into something was a clear sign like, hey, I only have explosive traps in my deck. And uh, so I will be really surprised if Faramir has a snake trap. And right now, life coach is going to bring his mech warrior with clunkers versus that face hunter i have no idea how this will pan out but um i'm, I'm so curious to see I'm, I'm thinking about the actual percentage and i think it's actually even lower than 40 percent. it has to be like 25 percent, right because there's only th outcomes of four four three four three four and three three so that's so that is tw that's four out of 16 so that was a 25 percenter for life coach wow yeah <clears throat> Really, really cool stuff that it happened that one way then. Um, like you said, we have Mech Warrior coming up face hunter. It's definitely not going to be easy for Life Coach. Looking forward to see if he can do it, though. I mean, Faramir, unfortunately, hasn't been blessed by the RNG gods at the end of that game, but maybe it can be made up to him if he gets a really good start this time around. Part of the thing that also played into is that Life Coach curved out very nicely in that game. 
You add le uh, the Clockwork Gnome into the Snow Chugger, which froze his opponent's uh, face for a long time, and then had the Tinker Town Technician doing crazy damage over that game. Yeah, it's actually crazy that Life Coach didn't get uh, Fireball, Frostball. Like, Faramir taking those um, very risky decisions, but correct decisions to put himself in a situation when he, when he can top deck and win the game. Uh, unfortunately for him, Life Coach got um, a bit lucky with the percentages, but then a Life Coach making a, a very nice decision. So those are those are the things that change who wins the game or who loses. Uh, like a lot of people can argue that Harson has some RNG, but then those uh, those players they make those decisions themselves and put themselves into the shoes of a player who wins the game if he allows himself to get lucky. Because Life Coach could just play safe, like just play an Iotron and uh, maybe a Spider Tank and a single card like Unleash the Hounds, Quick Shot, Kill Command, like there is so many outs uh, for Farmir there to, to, to simply win the game. Uh, like we just denied the chance uh, for Farmir to top deck anything and uh, and took the victory. I'm really impressed. Alright, here we go. Mech Warrior, that opening hand from Life Coach is not what he wanted to see at all. He's going to have to toss them all back. Every Unfortunately, he has the chance to toss it back. Uh, yeah, I guess the the silver lining is that you toss it back and you don't have a chance to draw any of those, right? I guess Fell Reaver, you could draw again. But everything else, you'd play one of. Oh, wow. This hand now looks amazing, actually, with double McWarper, Anoyatron, and Tinker Dunk Technician on free. Wow, dang. Wow. That's really awesome. And Faramir, of course, sees that his nice shovel will get contested. Is he, is he forced to play it anyways? I guess I not, because he has uh, abusive sergeant as well. Yeah. Also, it's not like you always expect the best opening from um, the mech mech deck. Like you don't want to see mech warper into an Iotron. That's super tough. But what you normally expect is like a spider tank, or maybe even you know like a, just this. Uh, well, not a snow chugger because War doesn't have it, but something that's manageable. That's why you drop the Hunter Creeper because you get um, at least two ni two knives from the juggler especially with the Abuser Surgeon. You can attack something for free, maybe kill the Mechwarp or get the juggles and then you still are left with two minions on board. Um, so that, that's why the Hunter Creeper was the correct play but Life Coach is an amazing, amazing opening. He's also trying to see if he should attack and kill off these spiders to play around the, the knife juggler possibilities. This is a very hard evaluation because both have strong implications. And yeah. he does interpret that his opponent has it. Farmer is very annoyed by it. Oh, Unleash Towns is very nice. But uh, that Noyatron's still doing pretty good work, making sure that there's a mech that sticks onto the board. And now Tinker Town can come down as well as any mech that's two or less. Life Coach is so close to playing that pilot uh, Sky Golem. <laughs> but yeah, Technician is great on, on turn 3. Um, so li right now Life Coach has all he needs. He has a, a very strong board and Hunter will need to deal with this. Mm, yeah. Least desirable choices. Just if kill one of the back. back yeah, like, what would you expect? He's actually not killing anything, and that's crazy because we're going to see the pilot Sky Golem being dropped on four. But well, even if the if you think about Clunker, like Clunker is a four mana card, and not killing those Mech Warpers, not denying the Mech, even though it's counterintuitive because you are the face hunter, mm -hmm. could cost you the game there. Yeah, and he's uh, of course Life Coach is playing around the Unleash and the Knife Juggler combinations. Very good read on both ends. Uh, Farmer is trying to let his opponent build up a little bit more, but that pilot Sky Colm is going to do so much damage with the Arcanite Reaper. Oh man, that is just that is just insane damage on both ends. Well, you can still kill it and see what happens. Um, on the other hand, Farmer has a full board now. And Life Coach doesn't really have anything to deal with this. Life Coach will have to close his eyes and start attacking. Yeah, I just go face an Arcanite Reaper, man. Let him put up a taunt. In fact, he can't really put up a taunt unless he suicides his own minion first. <laughs> he just says, yeah. he just says, deal with it. He needs a Misha. Yeah, or um, 
Yeah, he needs Misha. That's it. And it's tougher. Oh, so How much so damage is right now? There's no way for him Four, to eight, kill him this turn. 12. Right? 14, 17. Yeah, no way to kill him. So that's it. He's like five short. Uh, is there anything that could benefit him by killing off this this pilot sky golem? I can't imagine it. There's a couple of taunt minions too. Sengen Shield Master, Mogushan Warden. Yeah, there's oh, yeah it is man. A mech deck killing the hunter. Jeeves. <laughs> I guess Jeeves can benefit him, but not in the way he wants. Yeah, well, damned if you don't try, at least. Yeah, just quick shot your own huffer. Aww. Arcanite Reaper, man. They're just so like a doom hammer to the yeah. face. That opening from Life Coach, though, I, I really liked it. I I think today's, all the series were actually amazing. I had so much fun for them. We've seen Maligos, mm -hmm. we've seen some dragons, we've seen a lot of legendary cards. And a really interesting decks. Um, Maligos Druid from Tides, Maligos Mage from Gara. Uh, Mech Warrior from Life Coach. It's amazing. All right. Just well, uh, we've had a really good collection of games, like you said, but we also want to take an opportunity to uh, recognize what's going on here with the NVIDIA tournament. Make sure to check out esports.geforce.com and figure out what's going on. Uh, check in on your favorite pros as well as what other players are going through the open portion of the tournament. I think 15,000 people signed up for 25,000 US dollars and 100 World Championship points to the winner. Um, yeah, we also wanted to talk a little bit about some of the cool stuff. We do recognize that Hearthstone's coming out on mobile. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you have to play just on phones. There's a Shield tablet, which is also really cool for playing some Hearthstone too. Uh, Nimsh and I got some. Have you been able to play any Hearthstone on that, buddy? Oh yeah, I, I'm playing on uh, on Shield. Like Shield is uh, basically amazing, and uh, you can play Hearthstone, but also you can use the the grid functionality. So you, you can play games right. like. Borderlands 2 on just your tablet, which is just crazy, right. streaming from NVIDIA servers. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, I've had some opportunity to play it. A little bit too busy. I can't take it with me to travel, but you could if you want to fit in your suitcase with it, too. So check out all that cool stuff. Again, uh, esports.geforce.com. We're done for today. Another week down. We're halfway through. Nimsh, any final comments before we go? Um, the final comment is that I want to thank all, all the viewers for watching and I want to thank you for, for hosting and, uh, and co-casting with me. That's, uh, it's always a pleasure. We had some great matches and I'm looking forward to the next week. Yeah, always a pleasure too on, on my end, buddy. We're done, so thank you so much. Big shout out to our production crew as well as everyone who's tuned in. We'll see you guys next week for more Pro-Am here for the, the Hearthstone NVIDIA tournament. See you guys next time.